is it? Okay. Um, welcome to Janet Thornton, the legend. Um, I've asked Janet to, to to obviously come and share her wisdom with you, really, because wherever I go, I do a lot of business networking, like Janet does, and wherever I go, she's really, really always highly regarded. So she's got a lot of wisdom. She run a really successful recruitment company for a number of years. Um, tell us a little bit about that, Janet. Okay. Went into recruitment, I suppose, later in life. I was over 40 when I joined a recruitment agency. Previous to that, I'd worked at Sheffield Newspapers for 16 to 18 years, I'm not quite sure now. And in that time, I'd worked in lots of different departments. And one of them was uh, setting up a new telesales team where I actually did all the recruiting for it and sort of trained and everything. And I loved it. And then in late 80s, when it came to uh, newspapers were going through a rough time, they were making people redundant. And I volunteered redund to be made redundant. Unfortunately, my boss said he didn't want to get rid of people like me and he wouldn't let me go. But then he went and got redundancy himself. So uh, I think that were a bit of a, <laughs> he wanted to leave somebody he said that could do it. Could cope. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, I did that. And then two years later, I did leave and went to work in recruitment in early 90s. And um, I loved it. Went to work at a high street agency where I dealt with everything on the temporary side from um, on lorry drivers through to uh, secretaries, PAs, but all on temporary basis. Then about four years later, I saw a vacancy advertised for law recruitment, which was just running permanent vacancies on a law, for law firms. And I applied for that and got that job. And three weeks after I started, the manager of the branch, he hadn't recruited me, his, his manager had recruited me. And uh, one morning he just didn't come in. Oh, wow. And that was it, and I was told that he'd been asked to leave. So he left and they asked me if I would take the job as the manager, which I did, and I loved it. And I really set up uh, sort of the law, the law side of it, which wasn't doing extremely well. And I went out, saw law firms, talked to them, and got to the stage where I could find them either as legal secretary or a partner in whatever field they wanted. Yeah. And I could get to a point where I could just send one person know that that person Was fitted right. in, yeah. which saved the law firm lots of time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In uh, 2007, my boss was 60 that year and he'd been living part-time in Milan and at the other time he got a house in, in York and decided that him and his wife were going to move to Milan permanently and that he got offices in Sheffield, Manchester and Leeds at that stage. I'd run Harrogate but we closed Harrogate the year before and so I, uh, it was, he offered me the chance to take over the business, which I did, and I loved it. And Wonderful. I, I, so to, I was in the centre of town, in very expensive offices, and sort of realised that uh, in 2000, I think uh, 2010, things were getting worse. A lot of changes in law firms that, that had all the miners' claims and all them came to an end and that kind of thing. So with that, um, I decided that, you know, so I was going to close the office. I'd had the same secretary all the time I'd been there for over 10 years. Wow, wonderful. And another lady that just worked part-time, who I'd worked with for 42 years, uh, at Sheffield Newspapers and then she'd been in recruitment with me and so the secretary was moving to Canada but she just needed some temporary work so I found her some temporary work and we moved, uh, Catherine and I moved to work at my house and we set up an office at home which was great, we were able to do sort of um, the recruitment from there, we didn't run any of the other desks, we just re used recruitment. Yeah. And we did that for um, another four years. Yeah, wonderful. And unfortunately, she decided she was nine turned sixty, and she wanted to retire. <laughs> so there seems and, to be a bit of a pattern here, doesn't there? With sixty. And so she decided she was going to retire, and I decided that I'd had enough 
of the pressure that you used to be under. When I first started, I liked to go and find out about my firms, what kind of people they employed, yeah. that kind of thing. Then they all brought in, and I was dealing with, mostly then with senior partners, so they got to know me, they got to know to trust me, and that kind of thing. When it came to an HR department, they were trying to prove themselves and I yeah. understand that that you know they want to show that they can do that job of course. and so I felt that when they just ask him for CVs and they don't want to know about the person that's not me that's not my way of doing, things. doing the business yeah so I decided that I would retire uh, which was a year last December yeah. but I have started but, with a business yeah you've not you've not I stopped there have you no. no I could not I mean, I am 66 years old, but I just felt that I'm not ready for retirement yet. I love the networking that I do, yeah. and I love helping people. And I think what made me decide, I went to a wedding, and it was a beautiful wedding, and it did cost an absolute fortune. But, um, you know, so to these days when kids have got to watch and buy houses, <laughs> and such all that kind of thing. I just think it's such a shame that they've got to spend the deposit for a house on a wedding. Yeah, yeah. And my husband's always been a wedding photographer for 40 some years. He's done it ever since we've been married. And I've made cakes for the last 20 years. Made wedding cakes and all kinds of cakes. So I went out and I bought all um, vintage crockery. So I've got loads and loads of yeah. uh, bone china and lovely stuff. So we put together a package where we can actually do a wedding for £1,500 for 50 people. Yeah. And that includes a uh, wedding cake, uh, wedding photographs done on sort of a disc so that they can make their own make albums their own album, up and yeah. things like that. And so to now do afternoon tea. And so all they have to do is provide the room and the yeah, room. and away you go. And I think it's going really successful. I set my target to do 12 a year. I've done 17 this year. <laughs> uh, not all weddings, but I've done baby showers. I've done funerals. I've done all kinds of different, different things. things yeah. uh, raise money for charity. One tea party we did in April this year. And we raised... Uh, over two and a half thousand in two hours Bloody by having that's afternoon great. tea in somebody's garden. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and I just love the satisfaction I get from helping, from helping people. people yeah. And that's why I still, I mean, I do go to networks, I go to lots of networks, but I don't really need to go for business. Yeah. I have been so lucky that the people that I have met over the years have all given me business, you know, so to, I mean, yeah. I did 60 some Christmas cakes last year. <laughs> I've limited it to 35 this year right, right. and you know and I'm still on Saturday night or out and somebody just says but you did include me in that 35 <laughs> didn't you, you know? and uh, you feel really guilty then because they've supported you so much. Yeah. I've never advertised my weddings or tea parties, I've never sort of had a face page, uh, a website, yeah. I have a Facebook page but I don't know I just seem to get Lots of well, lots let's, of I mean, let's, let's break that down a little bit then. So, I mean, what what do you think it is that you've done over your career? Because it, it's it's something that's followed you around, isn't it? You know, yeah, through through the recruitment, through the the, the, the job where the, you want to redundancies, and and obviously you, they won't let you go. Okay, so um, I think that what you've got is something that's followed you around. You know, you've. From, from the Sheffield Star when you wanted to take retirement, early, not retirement, sorry, re redundancy, to your boss wanting you to take over his business, giving you the opportunity to do that, to, to the cakes. Do you know, you've got something that's followed you throughout your career. What do you think it is that's, that's that unique point about what Janet does? I think I'm a good worker. I'm a good worker, whether it's been for myself or anybody else. I put the same effort in working for somebody else as I as do, do for, you. for myself. And I've always looked at them as being my business anyway. And it is my business because it's my business where I get the money from. Yeah. And you know, even when I was working for my boss, I um, I sort of uh, could have done that, and I wanted the commission. Yeah, so yeah. That's yeah. I, mean. I also think I'm firm but fair. I love people 
and I also take an interest in me. I hate, well, hate sort of, it's a bad hard word. I hate it when I can't remember people's names. And that's something about, I think, getting old. <laughs> I can remember where I placed them in a job, if they tell me where they were, and I bump into people all the time. Yeah. Candidates come back to me because they said, I listen to them. Yeah, you And yeah. I don't think it's any good putting somebody in a job just because you've got a vacancy there. You wouldn't get the right person. You wouldn't get the right person. And to me, that is extremely important that the candidate it's more important than the client all, yes yeah. I want to put a good impression with the client but I want to do what's right for the person as well, as well yeah, yeah. and likewise with on baking I want them to enjoy it I love the people's face when they come into a room what you've decorated yeah. and the bride bearing in mind it's a very special day and you know and I know some of them will think oh no you know afternoon tea but when I was young that's what weddings were yeah they were afternoon teas in the church hall and you know there's nothing wrong with it they can have as much fun and you know and sort of and that so i want to give back something to people that i've actually um worked with or felt that i could do i've always done mentoring with kids i love that i get very much into work wise and go and do the interviewing with them and prepare them for going for interviews and that's all voluntary work which i i think you've got to put something back yeah when yeah. you've had a good a good career a yeah. good career and you've got so much knowledge there haven't you as well that yeah, you can share got, well i hope that i hope so and i hope that even though i don't lo no longer do recruitment i learned an awful lot from it and made an amount of friends that could possibly uh, you know, sort of, and I, they all class me as friends, which is nice. Yeah, brilliant. On Saturday night, as you know, we're out at a ball that were done by a solicitor, and it was just lovely to see so many of solicitors that I'd placed in jobs. Yeah, I'd seen yeah, them get married. I'd done the wedding cakes for them. They're like the extended and, family. Yeah, and they were introducing me. I'd never met some of them's husbands. Right. And it was lovely on Saturday to, night. To in fact, that. I think my husband got a bit fed up with it. <laughs> sat there. He says, Who's that now? You know. And, stuff. <laughs> and it was really nice. And I think they all. I know that a few, a couple of years ago, while I was still doing recruitment, a, a big law firm got a, a new girl in their HR. And she ran me up, she says, I need you to come in and meet me. So I said, yeah, fine, you know, so I went in to meet you. I've had to come, I asked you to come in because I've heard so much about you <laughs> that I wanted to meet you. She says, you're like a legend in Sheffield. There we go, you see. And so and that's the only time I've ever heard that said. But, you know, sort of, um, I hope a smile isn't, doesn't hurt anybody. Yeah. And even if it's somebody that you don't particularly want to see or want to be with, I always can make a Apply smile and, anyway, and, yeah. and think, well, you know, sort of, um, one day I might need them. You might, you never know. And I always think you never know who you're going to meet on the way back. Well, that's so true. That's definitely true. Definitely, I'm a believer that treats everybody with respect, Fairly, yeah. whether it be an office junior coming for a job or such a senior partner in a law firm, I think would have treated everybody the same. Everyone the same, yeah. I would have never, ever thought that they, just because, yeah, I might only get three or four hundred pounds for a, a sort of an office junior, but to get sort of um, a, law, a senior partner, you're going to get that. But I think I'd work more with a junior than what than I would with a senior. Yeah, because they need that help. They need... One story, and, and it's so strange, <laughs> this, I once had a young man came in for a job to me and sort of, and he were in a bit of a state, he'd just moved up from Cornwall, his parents had split up, his mum had gone to live in Cornwall, but his dad was still in Rotherham. Okay. And sort of, and he came in to see me and I, he looked a bit of a, an oddball, long hair and sort of big shoes yeah. and all that kind of thing, but he wanted to be a legal executive. He'd not got his A-levels or anything okay. because he'd had this change in his life and this sort of thing. And I sort of said, well, look, you need to smarten up. Yeah. You need to sort of get yourself some clothes and yeah. to go. I said, and I'll send you for an office junior position. And I explained how he could become a, a legal exec. Well, okay. But he needed to, to go to and go start these... off that. And I rang a, a sort of firm up and I said, look, I've got this young man. I explained the story to him. I said, but, you know, so I wonder if you see him. I'll tell you what I'll do. Don't give me any fee for him. Have him yeah. if he's still with you in three months' time, we'll then pay me. Yeah. 
And she said, go on then, Janet, send him. And I sent him and she, she ran, she says, you're right. He, did, he is a bit of an oddball, <laughs> isn't he? But we'll give him a chance. But that's the kind of relationship I have. Well, that's what I was going to say then. A few years later, and he, we were in Paradise Square and he was in Paradise okay. Square. A few years later, he came up to me and says, Mrs Thornton, I want to say thank you to you. So I said, why? I said, you're still at the same firm? He says, yeah. And I'm now just done my three years as training to be a legal executive. Fantastic. He says, and that. Then of all the strange things, I do have a lot of girlfriends when we have trips to Portugal and places like that. And one year, a lady came who I'd not actually met before, and she sat down talking to me and she's a really good friend now and she says to me what do you do and I told her she says oh she's so young you know so to, you don't deal with younger because she dealt with young right. and I said yeah I do and I told her that story and she says that is my friend's son no way and it was her friend's son she says he's told us about this woman he went to see oh, fantastic. and you know and so things so what goes around comes, comes around, around. No, that's brilliant that. because now I help her with her, her businesses looking after kids getting them into school that's amazing. Uh, with the master cutler and it's you know so it, it's wonderful it's yeah wonderful. and I love that part about yeah. it more satisfaction from that than I did I mean, my biggest fee was £25,000 right, okay. for somebody. It I must did. have been a high-end exec. It was, yeah. uh, hundred and some thousand. And, but, yeah, when I, the, the, I worked in the agency then, and they put the, the photograph, the, the cheque when it came in, and said, who put it in your, <laughs> your CV? And I never put that in my CV. No. You know, no. I just, I thought, well, it was just a it's job. It's what I do, it's what yeah, I do, it's, yeah. And sort of and that. So I think it's... Being kind to people. Totally. So, how, how how important would you say is 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 discipline on you know on your day to day activities? From, I think from... it's very important. Even though I still work at home, I get up and I would say I'm sat at my desk by half past seven every morning. Yeah. Uh, I can make cakes at five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> um, and I you know I've got friends who say if I worked at home I'd never, I'd never get, get ready. Done. I'd yeah. never I'd be watching television and that. <laughs> no, I don't. We never have television on. I don't like radio on in my office either because I think that distracts it distracts and yeah. things. But I have all when I've worked at home all the time. I'm still up and at my yeah, computer, computer early morning. Yeah. So so would you say that what's 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 been your driving force? Is, it, is, it, is your driving force to everything you've done always about giving the best service possible? Giving the best service. Yeah, that that's what's really important. drove you on, is it? Yeah. I would always want to think that I'd done a good job. Yeah. And I think because I know that then people come back to me over and over, over, and again, over again that I did do a good job for them. And I, I did it not only for the firms, I did it for the candidates as well. Yeah, brilliant. You know, because they come back to me even now. They all think they're my friends. Yeah, I mean, on yeah. Saturday night, somebody sat on to me and my friend did say to her, do you know Janet? Of course, of course I, know, I Janet, know Janet, you know. Yeah, and, so yeah. and it is nice when, uh, and I didn't ask, I, I don't I do know her name, but I didn't ask how I knew her because yeah. I, think, you know, I don't want to disappoint <laughs> them either. Yeah, sure. They don't realise that you're seeing hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of, of people. people. Sure. And, you know, and so to, just because you find them a job, you don't, yeah. you don't always remember. If they'd have told, she'd have told me where she worked, you did, you I'd have remembered. Remember it where, yeah. Yeah. But um, I didn't do that part, but you know, <laughs> sort of it were, it was just one of those things and I, I that happens to me all the time. Yeah. So know. if you could go back, so when you started in recruitment, what did you say when you were? Oh well, 42. 42, so if you could go back to when you first took over the company, Mm, 2007. So 2007, you first took over the company, you're going to go back to 2007, what advice would you give yourself that could have been made it better, different, more streamlined, if you scale, mm. what, what, what would be the one biggest piece of advice that you would give yourself? That's an odd question. It is, it's a good one. I think it would have been not to be um, trying to be everything to everybody. You know, to sort of focus on what you've got, yep. and rather than trying to keep everybody happy, uh, just keep focused. Yeah. Because I think you can get distracted, especially when it's your business, and, uh, and people come along and they ask you to do other things, and you don't want to let them down. You don't want to disappoint them. Yeah. You don't want to disappoint them, but I think I would. It pulls you away from. Yeah. Yeah. Kept a bit more focused. Um, I don't think I'd have been any more successful, but I think I'd have got 
uh, more out of more it. More out of it, yeah. Because it wasn't the actual, you know, I might have been doing things I didn't really want to do, but I wanted to help somebody. Yeah, sure, sure. And that was, same with that was, I did inherit a bit of the insurance side. Okay. And that's one of the problems I well, had. Yeah, with trying, not problem, but trying to keep them happy. Uh, when really that weren't what have, I did yeah, sure. anymore, and it took it took finance to do it as well. Yeah, because you still had to advertise. Whereas my advertising for law, I could run with it because I got such a good reputation. Right, yeah. And so to with the insurance, insurance is diff yeah. it's different. And it's expensive and advertising. Yeah, and we hadn't got anybody else that specialised in just insurance oh, okay, yeah, cool. so you know it was um trying to be too much wearing too many hats yeah too many hats keep, yeah. keep focused on what your, on job, what your is job is and what you want to achieve and pass the and other stuff targets. on to people what's yeah yeah mm. I should have took somebody on to do it, yeah. but I didn't you because didn't. finance. Oh, hold yeah, it, you, keep yeah. Hold of it as well, and yeah. yeah, so I think I would have done that differently, and if I'd have learnt in on the a bit of a do, which is my cakes part, I should have learnt to say no. Say no earlier. Earlier. Yeah. And I am which doing is that now. What I'm going to actually ask now. So where can where can people find out about a bit of a do? What what where can on they? Facebook, on, Facebook. on Facebook. On Facebook. Go into Facebook. Do. Look for a bit of a I'll play with this. <laughs> you have to play with this. Um, so yeah, so where can people find out a bit more about you, Janet? On Facebook. Facebook, yeah. yeah and so to have been, if I can help them, I will. You will, yeah. Yeah. She, she, she's busy. She's got lots on. So you better be quick. Um, Janet, it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, there's so much to, to, to learn from Janet, and, and Janet's helped me a lot over the years. She's introduced me to things. She's given me ideas which has flourished into businesses. You know, it's been been wonderful um, with it with the social media. Oh yeah. Yeah, you looked a bit like that, didn't you? Like, wow. I know, well, yeah, when you were talking about said. the social media, yeah. <laughs> so it's been it's been it's been really good. So again, thank you. Can I have a kiss? Oh, look at that! Don't let Sarah see that. Brilliant. Thank you, Janet. You're welcome.